I feel like there are so many different ways um, but that you can build your network and so many trainings from top coaches that have, have given the same resources and that's exactly what I do. So I'm going to touch on that and give you guys like a, like how I built my business in the very beginning and how I build my business now. Um, not much is different. I just have a different focus on it. Um, but then the other part is attracting people who are like you. And so I'm going to go over what that really means and um, also give you guys some comfort in that even when you're four star, five star, six star, sometimes that can be a struggle. And so I, don't, I say that with comfort so that you know that you're not alone and it's not just new coaches, but I don't want to scare you in the fact that it never goes away. <laughs> like it's kind of so. <laughs> Catch 22 there. Um, so first off, find in it. If at any time you guys have questions, feel free to unmute yourself and ask because I want this to be engaging. I want you guys to ask questions about the topics that we're talking on and, and learn because if you have specific situations or you're doing, if you're doing something that's helping you build your network, I want you guys to share that because everybody is going to do things differently and everybody needs help in different areas. So don't be afraid to just unmute yourself and I can see when the microphone line goes off and I'll like kind of stop and let you guys talk or just do a, a chat. Um, so I'm going to mute everybody, but then you are allowed to unmute yourself. Like you have that ability. Um, and I think if you're on the phone, it's star six, nine to unmute yourself if you want to talk. Um, so building your network. One of the biggest questions I get is, how do I expand beyond my friends and family on Facebook? So when you started as a coach, we all, and if you haven't done this, this is going to be your number one homework. You all should have filled out a list of 100 people and kind of like a memory jogger, like writing on all your friends, your close family, coworkers, past coworkers, um, people you went to college with, people you see on Facebook consistently people you text or if you travel, like, you know, I go to Michigan. So like people that I go see in Michigan, um, people that I've met here. So when you sit down to write your list of a hundred, that's what I'm talking about. Like anyone and everyone and write someone's name down. Even if you're like, I don't really want to talk to them because if it, it, writing it down might trigger somebody else that you know, because of them or, you know, through them. So, so always just write down the name because you never know what that name, like, Oh, you know, Kim Cristiano. Oh, Kim Leffler. Oh, Kim B. And then, you know, you think of all your Kims and that just gets your foot, it gets your, your brain going. So write a name down. Um, so what you need to be using that 100 list for is you should be going through that. And if you want to section it off, you can and go through and say, okay, I really think this person would and highlight their name. Okay, I really think this person would be a great coach one day. Highlight them in pink. Go through and kind of find your target people and start connecting with them first. And when I say connecting with them, I'm not saying message them and say, hey, I'm a Beachbody coach. Come join my challenge group. I'm saying, hey, girl, I saw you pop up with my newsfeed. Hey, girl, I saw a picture of your daughter the other day. She's super cute. Realize we haven't chatted in a while. How have you been? What's new? How old is your daughter? Hey girl, I was talking to so-and-so and your name got brought up and I realized we haven't chatted in a long time. I just wanted to send a message and see how you're doing. Super simple. Like I am the, one of the biggest introverts. Like when Matthew and I go to parties, I do not want to meet new people. Like I just want to sit at a table with Matt and just have enjoy your night. Like I don't want to meet new people. But so this was like very foreign to me. It was very new but I didn't have to face to face anyone. So if somebody wanted to delete my message, I would never even know. Like there was not, they might not respond, which is fine, but I didn't have that immediate rejection. So this was, this as an introvert, this came easier to me. Um, you know, I feel like a lot of people make it a, I don't want to say a bigger deal than it is because it can be out of your comfort zone, but it's just a simple message. I mean, if, if they don't want to respond, they don't have to respond and you just keep, building that. So you should be messaging three to five people 
every single day from that list. Every single day. So that's way number one is your 100 list. Those are your friends, your family, your, your warm market, if you will. Um, number two is going to your, your friends list on Facebook. And this can kind of tie into 100, but maybe there's people on your friend list that you didn't write on your 100 list going through them. And if it's like someone, okay, we have 50 mutual friends, that's someone that you should be able to just shoot a message to and say, hey, you popped up in my newsfeed or I saw so-and-so liked a photo of yours and your name popped up, so I thought I'd message you and see how you're doing. Make it, it's all about them. It has nothing to do with you. It's all about them. How are you doing? If that is uncomfortable to you, like go to their Facebook profile and see what kind of job are they doing? Are they now a stay-at-home mom? Are they doing something you used to do? Like I look for fitness people. Um, you know, check out their pictures. Did they just have an event? Did somebody just have a birthday? Did they just get married? And comment on those things. Like people love to share their life with you if they're on Facebook and they're active on it. They want you to ask those questions. Like they want, I, if, if someone came to my page and say, Hey, I just saw you had twins. I'd be like, yeah, I did. And I would probably tell my whole life story, but being engaged and showing interest in them there, they don't mind responding back to you. Um, so go to your friends list, see who you have mutual friends with, see what's new in their life on Facebook. The other thing is, is you can kind of tell when doing this, if someone's active on Facebook or not, usually the people who are more active on Facebook naturally make better coaches. They're more engaged in the challenge groups because they're already on social media. That's not another hurdle they have to get over. So that's always good to know and to keep in your back pocket too when you're inviting and taking notes and kind of organizing your business with you know, your new contacts. So way number one is your 100 list. Way number two is your Facebook friends list. Way number three is get into groups. I don't mean challenge groups. I don't mean coach groups. I mean groups. So when I first started, I was a, some of you guys know this, but if you don't, I just want you to know this background. I was a new mom to the twins. They were four months old when I started. Matthew and I had lived in Florida for not even a year, maybe just a year, I think. So anyways, so we didn't have this huge friend base because we'd only been here a year. I was only working for a little while. Yeah, it was just a year. I was only working for a little while, um, and the people that I had built friendships with, none of them were married. They were all just still dating, and here I was, married for the last two years, pregnant with twins, and they didn't get that. Like, that was a whole different realm. So I had no network down here in Florida, like nothing. So I used Facebook, and it was kind of perfect timing because as soon as I started coaching is when I like felt finally comfortable to get on Facebook and share my, my journey and meet new moms. But I plugged into so many groups on Facebook. I plugged into twin mom groups. I plugged into like twin mom groups, Florida. There's so many like boy, girl, twin groups, twin groups, Florida groups, South Florida, twin mom groups, South Florida, twin or boy, girl, twin mom groups. <laughs> Um, at the time I was exclusively pumping. So I got plugged into exclusively pumping. I got plugged into nursing groups. I got plugged into, you know, C-section groups. I got plugged into bodies after baby. I got plugged into, um, like oxygen magazine. I followed that like page and started interacting on that. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else I got into, but it was like a stage in my life that I needed help with. And I was interested in it, so I would get into those pages and be involved, and I just plugged myself in there. And I built my network so much just from plugging myself into those groups. And I cannot tell you the support, though, that those groups gave me. So then when I was messaging and talking to these moms, I wasn't trying to go in that with, the, with Beachbody and come join my children group as a mindset. Like, I literally had questions for them. Like, how the heck are you nursing twins and what's your secret and what are you doing? And, you know, after six or seven months of asking those questions, I was the one getting messages to me. How are you doing this for your twins? So 
getting involved in those groups is an awesome non-salesy way to build your network. So how I made this work for me was when I sat down for my power hour and I had to add to my network, instead of just scrolling through Facebook and going, who am I going to add? Who am I going to add? Like I would post a question in one of these groups. Can someone give me some tips on X, Y, Z? And you'd get like 30,000 responses back. And so I would just kind of, again, I was picky and I was choosy because you get to pick and choose who you invite to this business and who you work with. I would find moms that their Facebook profile, I mean, it's kind of judgmental, but you just try and find people that you connect with, that you look at their page and go, I like her. Like she'd be fun to hang out with. I'd go have coffee with her. You want to have that feeling with them by looking at their, at their profile page because you want to get messages from them. You want to get on a team call and see their beautiful face on here. Like you want to be excited to do one-on-one -on -one calls with them. And part of that is knowing them before you start engaging in them. So that is how I use the groups was me posting questions. And then the other way was if someone posted a question, I would put my comment, I would comment in the thread, but then I would also private message them. And I would say, hey, I saw your question in the such and such mom group. I commented on there, but I just wanted to make sure you saw my response and give my answer. Hope this helps. Look forward to hearing from you soon, Brittany. Nothing salesy, nothing about Beachbody, nothing about anything. Just two moms desperately seeking help, sleep, tips, whatever the case may be. And we were there just to support each other. And then we became friends on Facebook and the conversations just grew and we followed and you know, like when you, when you approach it from that way, they trust you and they, they're excited about you and they go to your page to see your kids or to see, you know, what sports you're doing or whatever you're into. So way number one is 100 list. Way number two is your Facebook friends list. Way number three is joining groups and engaging with them during your invite list or your power hour. Number four is a like page. Now, some people have one, some people don't. It's totally up to you. Um, I started a like page right out of the gate, but that's when they were a little bit different back then, and there wasn't all this paying for a dollar, there wasn't this pay for ad or boosting a page or anything. So my, my, my opinion now on it is I would start a like page because you can build content on it. And I would start putting one or two, maybe three posts a day on there. One is fine just to have that content. So when you do launch it and you do start running an ad or boosting a post, there's content there for those people who you're, in, who you're paying to come to your page. There's content there for them to see already and it's not this one post. Um, but as I just listed, there's so many ways to connect with new people on Facebook that you don't have to pay for that as new coaches, I want you guys to be spending as little money as possible because as a new coach, you probably don't have a lot of extra beach body money coming in. So I, that would be my suggestion with that. Now, if you do have a like page, that's kind of a whole nother, <laughs> um, session because there's so much to do on there. But how I got my like page going, and I'll tell you this, I um, started just promoting my page for like $3 a day, and I would do it from the first of the month to the fifth of the month. So it would spend $15, and that might get me 10 to 15 new likes on my page for the month, but that was 10 or 15 contacts. Those were 10 or 15 people, and if they shared something of mine, then who knows how many news feeds it went into, or you know, that kind of stuff, like, what was so, like, uh, can I ask you, why was it so important the first of the 15th? Is that just a number that you picked? Oh, I just picked the first of the fifth because it was the beginning of the month. So I would message them right away. And then I had the whole month to build those relationships. And that way, when my challenge group was starting next month, we were probably at a place where I could invite them or we were comfortable with it. Um, so that's why I chose that. And then as my income grew, I just invested a little bit more back each month. 
So then I did the first through the seventh, then the first through the tenth, then the first through the fifteenth, then the first through like you know, and I just kept adding on a few days, and now I just run it. Um, I change my dollar amount a day. I don't do five dollars a day anymore, <laughs> but I run it consistently so that I'm consistently having those new people. But you don't have to go into this and be like, okay, I have to keep promoting my like page, you know, all day, every day. Like just start small, put a small little investment into it, get 15 or 20 new people in the beginning of the month. And if you have a good few weeks, maybe you do it again for another two days and get, you know, and, and, and build your network. So the few ways that you can do that from the like page is number one, obviously, try and message everyone who likes your page because you want to thank them for liking your page. Um, I'll, I don't know if you guys will be able to see it. Um, I think one thing that's key for, for me when I do this is, um, oh, I can't paste. Um, I have a generic message and I copy and I paste that, but then I, again, I go to their profile page and I look at them and I see their occupation. What do they do? Are they a teacher? Are they a stay-at-home mom? Are they into fitness? Like, are they a personal trainer? Are they a nurse? Like, those are four huge occupations that Beachbody attracts. Stay-at-home moms, teachers, nurses, and people in the fitness field because Teachers like to lead, teachers like to teach, nurses like to help people, stay-at-home moms want that flexibility, they want that extra income, and fitness professionals, well, that's kind of, they're a little bit trickier to, to get into here, into the business, but once we're in, we're in. Um, but, so you, that's why I look for that, and I come, do they have kids, do they have like a brand new baby as their profile picture, do they have a wedding picture? You know, I see what is their cover photo and when, this is key, when was their last post? If I go to their profile page and their last post is from May, I'll send them a message, but I'm not paying a dollar because they haven't been on Facebook since May. They haven't posted on Facebook since May. And how do, like, like I said earlier, like, if they message me back or if they like a, like a challenge treat post, like, of course I'll message them. But if I'm going to spend a dollar and I'm going to spend time, I want to spend time and spend my money on people that are already engaging on Facebook. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's kind of, and I, and when I'm sending that message, I comment about those things. How long have you been into fitness? Also, I see your state, you're a stay at home mom. I am too. I have two and a half year old twins. How old are your kids? How many do you have? So then we're talking about other things than just fitness. We're talking about our family. We're talking about being a stay at home mom because then I can ask another question and they say, Oh yeah, I'm a stay at home mom does so and so. Have you always been a stay at home mom or what kind of work did you do before? Do you work part time? Like, what does your husband do? And it opens just this floodgate of questions without feeling like you have to turn it. It just flows easier. So if you can get on their page and truly like comment to them about something that you saw on their page, it just is, comes across as more meaningful. You're not a robot. You're not a copy and paste. And you're taking the time to just seek out their page for two or three seconds and comment on something. Your kids are beautiful. Your cover photo looks great. You're, you know, whatever. But it just makes it a little bit more personal. Way number two to build your network on your like page is after you message, like, if you, so for me, if I get on my like page because I'm running it often, I go back to my last, like, four posts and I see who liked them before I message the people who are newly liking my page. I go to my last four posts and I click and I see who liked it and I message those people first if I have not ever messaged them before because you want to engage with the people that are already engaging with you. So if they're already liking and commenting on your post, that means it's in their newsfeed. So why not put your name in their inbox because they know your name they see it on Facebook. Now your name is in their inbox and you can refer directly to that post. Hey, I saw you liked my post on my like page, Brittany Wright about X, Y, Z. And you can do it that way. And that opens that conversation again to not just be about fitness or not to just to be about do you enjoy my challenge group, but 
Hey, why did you like that post? What stood out to you? Are you a mom? Do you have kids in preschool? Do you go to a peanut preschool? Like that opened a lot of conversation. So by posting what's going on and liking and conversing back with those people, I might not have to approach my like page likes as often because I want to give my attention to those who are, are engaging with me. Does that make sense? Any questions about that? Okay, so that's just Facebook. Now there are so many other ways. There's Instagram, there's face-to-face, -face, there's meetup.com is another way that I've heard coaches. Um, and I'm not gonna go over all these. I just want you guys to know the other outlets. Pinterest is another one that I have been dabbing in um, a few days a week just to kind of see how that goes. And Meg did an awesome training on that um, on the national wake up call and she posted in the team page, I believe. So she has, you can YouTube search her Meg Wazinski and you'll find her Pinterest training on how to build your network through Pinterest. Um, highly recommend watching it. It's simple. It's cool. And it starts on Pinterest, but it goes back to Facebook. So watch her training on that. If you're struggling with meeting people directly on Facebook, that's a really good training. It's simple. Um, it just takes kind of a little bit of routine to get into. So that's how I built my business. And that's all I can really like speak from because that's what's worked for me. So does anybody else have different ways that they have found to build their business? I know Sarah has gotten involved with teaching Pio and then insanity. And that's led to job opportunity at the Y to teach classes. And she's, met people at her um, in her classes, which has led to her being able to personal train. And so now she's meeting, you know, other trainers, other instructors, and she's building her trust with her clients. So I know that's an a, a awesome way that Sarah has been able to build her business the last few months as well. Um, and you pay for your training up front for like PIO and personal certification, but that's also a tax write-off because you're investing in your business. So maybe it costs you, I don't, I don't know exactly, I know Pio wasn't like a crazy amount of money, but if there's a live class, a live format that you love, try that out um, and see if that's something that first you can fit into your schedule once you get certified, because I made the mistake of going to get certified, but I just never use my certification. <laughs> so make sure it's something that you want to do and that you have time and you have support from your spouse or you have time in your work schedule to invest in the studying and then, you know, finding a gym and having a set time. But that's another avenue um, that you could do or even just, um, I told Matthew, like my next big I'm going to do this type of thing is going to be to go to like an orange theory or to go to a CrossFit or a pure bar and go one time a week and meet new people. And you know, a lot of us on here are stay at home moms or we work and then we're mom, we work and we're mom. So we're always in the same places. And so it's really hard to meet people face to face because you're always with the same people. So that's, uh, that's something that I'm going to do that is going to make me get out of my comfort zone. What, Lisa? What do, you, what do you think about going to the gym? And I've actually heard, um, like this last actual na national wake up call, they had said something about she got hooked on Shakeology because they were passing out samples at the gym. Mm -hmm. Now they might be a trainer there. Like Sarah might be able to do that, you know, have samples of Shakeology after a class one day or something. It's definitely, up to the, the gym. Everyone's going to be different. They might let you come in and say, yeah, set up a table. I don't mind. But it might be a, um, a person who works there. Yeah, like probably. Okay. Um, so you'd have to see what gym, but with that said, kind of what I was saying, like it might not be a bad idea just to sign up for a class one time a week and just start meeting people. Like that's something I really suck at because I don't ever, I'm with the kids and I'm at school. Like now we're dropping off at school. So I'm meeting moms at school, but you know, I'm, I'm with the kids and we have our, our fun friends and that's who I see. And they know I do beach body and they do their thing with me. And you know, like the people I meet on a day-to-day -day basis are pretty set. Um, 
Another thing is joining a church group and seeing, a, you know, joining a small group. If, that, if that's something that, you know, might be, obviously it's personal growth, but it could be a potential business opportunity as well, just to kind of share that, um, share the opportunity and just meet new people and new opportunity. All right. Can I say something, Brittany? Yeah. This is, okay. Um, so the class thing, going back to the gym, I actually really like part of that. I mean, obviously like the training and like building up trust with my clients and stuff, but I like that you can show people that you can still go to the gym and you can mm -hmm. still do a home workout and you can still go to the gym and you can still do technology, especially now with on demand because you can take it with you and use the gym equipment. Mm -hmm. So it's been kind of like an eye opener, I think, to some people to be like, oh, you're a beach body coach, but you work here. <laughs> you're like, here. Yeah, so it's kind of cool in that way because it kind of, some people have never even heard of it. Like there are people like that still take my classes that have no idea what I do. <laughs> See? Yeah, I think that's key. And, you know, one reason that like, I mean, I was, I'm the opposite. Like I was gym, 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 gym all the time. I never did home workouts. I should say never. I never like followed through with them. And now I have not lifted or worked out in a gym since I was 10 weeks pregnant. <laughs> I just, I have fallen in love with these programs and they work for me. And so it just, you just never know. And I, I absolutely think that there's a good balance between the two. Like I get that from a lot of clients. Like, why have I an orange theory club? Like, great, do that. You love that. It breaks it up. It gets you out. Like, so that would be other ways is to get involved with church, do a church group or get involved into a fitness class or find a hobby that you like and start taking classes. You know, do you, I don't know. I'm, I don't have hobbies. Exercise is my hobby. So I struggle with that. Like running is my hobby. Um, you know, but are there like mom groups that you can take a part of? Are there, you know, do you, I know we have um, one coach is a bit, is big into horseback riding. So I suggested to her to find local horseback riding groups. And when you go to shows, like see if you can bring psychology with you or meet people that way. And don't just see them at the events, but get their phone number, find them on Facebook, like take the real world experience. But then I mean, you have to bring it back to technology at some point, whether it's phone, email, or Facebook, you know, create that relationship and build that trust with them that way too. Does that help? Does that like, does anyone have like, oh, I'm going to do that? No? No one's going to do it. <laughs> okay. So I just wanted to um, just chat about coaches real fast because I don't want to keep you guys too much longer. Um, about coaches, because I have been getting a lot of questions on, I don't know how to recruit. I don't know how to recruit. I don't know how to recruit. So number one, I'm going to be a Janelle, get rid of the word, word recruit. Because we're not trying to, we're not trying to get people. Like I don't, I don't want to cock someone and have to like talk them into being on my team because that's not going to be fun for me. That means I'm going to be chasing them and asking them, did you get your hundred list? Did you get this done? Did you get this done? And I don't, I don't want that. I want people like me that say, I want to do this. Like, I'm going to do this. Meg, you inspired me. I believe in you. I don't know you, but I believe in you and I'm going to do this. And so I want you to think about, and Sarah, I know you have done a really good job with this the last few weeks. So feel free to chime in at any time because Sarah and I have talked about this a lot. Like what kind of team do you want? Who do you want on your team? Who do you, what in your eyes makes a great coach? Meg had us do this um, exercise at a success club retreat. And so I want you to write down, you don't have to do it now, but I want you to write down sometime between now and next week 10 things that make a great coach that you would want in your coaches. Integrity, honesty, good work ethic, confidence, um, go-getter. You want a learner. I want a learner. And I want someone who's eager to learn. I want someone who is independent, but not afraid to ask questions. 
Like I want someone who I can, you know, help and mold and say, okay, here's a guideline and they can do it. And then when they ask me questions, I know they're asking me questions because I know that they've done X, Y, Z before they've come to me. I want a coach who has big dreams. I want a coach that can see past the dollar signs and know that we're helping people. And that's what happened to me last night. So we're in this event and there's all these questions and it's like floodgates and it's like chaos and I can't type fast enough and I'm trying to answer questions on my phone, answer questions on the computer. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so much fun. And I just sat there and I'm like, man, this is awesome. Like, this is awesome. We had, there were some go getters in there. There were people in there eager and ready to learn. And I guarantee that every single one of those people that were in there that were asking legit questions and sharing their excitement are going to be go getter, amazing coaches. They're going to see success. Now, what level of success? I don't know. Cause everyone has a different level and what they want from this business but they're going to give it their all and they're going to show up and they're going to do, and they're going to go on their journey confidently. So I want you to think about who do you want on your team? And they, um, what are they, what is it? An avatar. We've done this too. I've done this too. Like creating your perfect avatar. Like who are you speaking to when you do your challenge group posts? Who are you speaking to when you do your coaching post? I'm speaking to a girl who had zero confidence or has zero confidence. I'm speaking to a girl who can put on a smile, but has some heartache inside and is just not loving herself. I'm speaking to a new mom who feels like she's not, I'm going to cry, who feels like she's never going to have her body back and she's never going to be the same. I'm speaking to a person who feels like they've settled in their career, but knew they were made for so much more and had so much more to offer. And I'm speaking to someone who in the very deep depths of their soul knows that God's plan for them is bigger than something they could ever dream of. And they believe in that plan or, or they will believe sometimes we don't have that belief yet, but they believe in the God and they believe that God will carry them through. Like that's who I'm speaking to. So when I'm trying to like, when I'm sharing my story, I want to write things and share things that that person is going to connect with because that's who I want on my team. I want someone who, who is going through kind of what my story was, what my journey was obviously in their own way, but like wants that change and believes in that change and believes in that dream. And I'm looking at faces on here and I can see my story and the girl who I'm talking to and almost every single one of you, whether you're in my downline or or you're my PS or not, I can see every little piece of the girl that I want on my team and on a call like this, I can see it in each and every single one of you. There's something there that connected. There's something there that I was like, yep, she's going to be on my team. She doesn't know it yet, but eventually she's going to be on my team. I don't know why we're meeting right now, but I have a feeling like every single one of you. So I think that's a huge, huge thing. It's not about what kind of posts. It's not about always about the timing. Now, obviously these are factors, but it's more about who are you speaking to and are you speaking to the right people? Because you could sign up 10 coaches tonight. You could con anyone to do it, but are they going to do anything Are you going to feel satisfied? Are you going to be excited? Like I don't have very many coaches that I'm like, Oh, I have to do a one-on-one. I don't feel that way ever because I'm talking to friends. I'm talking to people that I go sit and have coffee with. Like if we all met in person, I don't, I would not skip a beat because you're people like me, (laughs) you know? And that's why I like Meg's team. We're people like Meg. We think we have hearts like Meg. We have passions. We have dreams like Meg. Like those girls are my rock. You, if you were to open up my phone, Leanne, Manny, Meg, Amanda, Ariel, like boom, 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 boom. Whether it's in my Facebook messages or my text messages, their names are in there because they're just 
they just get me. And if they were to be in a, Sarah, you can attest to this, like at Summit, you welcome Sarah with open arms. They've never met Sarah. But she's like me. Sorry. You know, like you we're, we're, you want people that are like you and you want people that are going to help push you and grow you and kind of bring out your weaknesses sometimes and make you push a little bit further. The other thing that's really going to help you build your team is surrounding yourself with five people who are building their teams. You are the five people you're around. So if you're struggling to hit success club, if you're struggling to you know, build your team, where are you spending a lot of your time and with who? Because you internalize who you're around. And like we don't realize it all the time, but we feel that and we kind of we bring that out when we're talking to people or when we're posting. And so just think about who you're spending time with. Now, like that's why like me, Meg, Manny, Leanne, like we, like we surround and we engulf each other so that when we are having a good, uh, like a bad day or a good time, like we're all kind of going through the same season right now in the last like six weeks. It's, it's weird. Like we all keep just like experiencing similar situations and we're all picking each other up because we're all, we're, we're five people who I'm not going to let her fall. I'm not going to let her fail. I'm going to pick her up and they're going to do the same thing for me. So who are you spending your time with and who are you connecting with on this team besides me? Like I don't, I share my struggles with Meg, but if I'm having a bad day, if I'm personal or business, I'm texting Leanne, I'm texting Amanda, I'm texting Manny. Like, so who are your five people on this team or on another team that, that you want to surround yourself with, to grow you, to help grow them, to help lead them, to be there for them and for them to be there for you? Because I set goals with those girls. Like, I set ambitions, and I do not want to let them down. Like, I want to be able to go back each week and say, I told you guys I was going to do this. So I'm at least, this is my proof that I'm at least trying, even if I fail. But that shows up in your posts, and that shows up in your confidence. And that shows up. I was just talking to one of them tonight. I don't want to say names, but, you know, it's really hard when you see, like, you know, Lindsay Matway and Brittany Leggett going, join my top 10 team and 15 star diamond and making 30,000 a week, like join my team. And then you have you over here and you're like, well, I'm a diamond coach. I made $500 this week. Like in, in your mind and in my mind, we're on top of the world. Like life is good, but you have to kind of, you have to, you have to breathe that confidence into your posts. Like you have to believe you are a top 10 team. You have to believe that you have the capability to be a top 10 team. I, I get my messages like, your team is doing so well. I'm so proud of you. I'm like, yep, we are. We are. We are a top team in this business. Absolutely. No doubt about it. We really are. 109. Good job, guys. But you have to believe that confidence you have to exude that in your posts. Like you can say things like we're on a top team in the business. Our team is in the top 0.05% of the company. You're on that team. It's not me. It's you guys. You're on that team. You make that team. Like you can share that. You can share that post. You can share that you're one of, you know, you're in this rank or whatever. Like own that. You guys did that. You owned it. They're, I mean, they've just been in this longer than we have. Or maybe their life story is different. So don't compare. It's super easy. And I, I'm speaking to myself when I say this. Don't compare yourself to those top coaches. Because maybe they've been in it longer or their journey is completely different. And so we don't know what goes on behind the scenes. And we don't, we just don't know. So own where you are and exude that confidence and people will be drawn to you because you have that confidence. Does that make sense? Does that like help? So let's get rid of the recruiting aspect. And I just want you to focus on one. I want you to build your avatar. Who do you want? Who are you speaking to? 
and put a name to her. I call her like Sally. I should name mine Bridget because that's what everyone calls me. Just name her Bridget. <laughs> Yep, that's me. Um, but who are you speaking to? And when you do a challenge group post, when you do like a, a, a personal post, like that's who you want to be speaking to because those are the people that are going to tug at their heartstrings and learn to trust you. Um, any questions? Does that help you guys? Does that kind of help? I mean, Sarah, do you have anything to, to add in with that as far as dream team? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, I think you got it pretty much. <laughs> um, I I think I commented earlier, but I I don't know what it is, but I believe in this one hundred percent is to make a list mm -hmm. of your dream team. Like I don't mm -hmm. care if they're not into fitness, if you haven't talked to them yeah. weeks, but like for some reason it's like that attraction. Like I have a whiteboard that sits in my kitchen and I have a list of prospective coaches that I'm just crossing them off because it might not happen tomorrow. It might not happen next week or next month, but I have people that were on that list from like six months ago who are signing up as coaches and it's crazy. Like the first time I was like, that's a coincidence. That's crazy. <laughs> but then it just started happening and like one by one, you just cross it off. And I think that like seeing their name, there's just something to it that just you're attracted like you're sending that to universe and saying they're gonna person. be on my team mm -hmm. yeah like they're gonna be there mm -hmm. um and then just like i don't know i think also when you do that kind of a thing or just like have a list somewhere you are looking at your conversations differently like you're listening to different parts of it too so when something strikes you in that conversation you know kind of put that back in your mind and say like you know, if they're talking about their job, you know, maybe in a few months when the time is right, you can approach them about coaching or like it's the next week or whatever that is. But I think that you just kind of like look at everything differently when you start to figure out who you want on your team or like the type of people. Because mm -hmm. I think in the beginning, I was just like signing up anybody because I just wanted people on the team, you know, and I wanted mm -hmm. to like work with any type of challenger and I wanted any kind of customer or client. And now I think after you learn a little bit like you start to be choosy because you figured out who you click with mm -hmm. you know at first you're still kind of finding yourself so yeah. uh, does that make sense yeah absolutely absolutely and I, I mean I'm that person I asked me two years why are you not coaching you're doing insane insane awesome results you're into exercise science like why are you not coaching um, cause I'm not doing that. That's what I said to her and my attitude towards it, which she couldn't see or hear was worse. <laughs> like what? But she, a, never, like, I think that's a fitness professional thing. Too. <laughs> uh, yeah. I told you we're, we're in when we're in, we're in. And sometimes like, I know. it's tricky. Allie Upham, she's an amazing coach and she's a fitness instructor. So, um, but just remember that, like making your dream team doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to join next week or join this week or join next month or maybe even a year. But by planting that seed in me to before, like, I mean, two years, I continue to just follow her and see like, what is this girl doing? And when I was ready, like I went to her because she continued to message me, even though I didn't message her back. She continued to grow her business. She, she didn't, she, she can, she just kept going. I'm like, well, I'm going to, I guess I'll get on this train and join her. So, you know, don't, I think that's a really a cool exercise too, is build the qualities. So write a list of the qualities that you want in your, in your coaches and, and who you want on your team. And then write a list of names that you're like, I want that, that person to be so awesome at coaching. Like for example, Alyssa, I don't even know if she's on. So, but she signed up as a discount coach and I was like, that's fine. And I kept telling him like, one day you're going to be a coach. One day you're going to do this one day, one day. I never like, I mean, we did, <laughs> but I, I was like, she's going to be on my team. Like, this is an awesome opportunity for her. Like she can do this. She can totally do this. And I was just patient and I prayed about it and I would maybe say stuff here and there to her, but I mean, she can say something wrong. Like she can, she can attest differently. But <laughs> I just felt like I was just planting those seeds 
And when she Great, so that's how this happens. You're praying over it. (laughs) So I was planting those seeds and I was praying over it because I wanted her on my team. I wanted her to do this business. And but the only way I wanted her to do it is if it was her time and if it was God's time for her to do it. So and now she's has four coaches under her. She's Success Club 10. She's fit. Like she's lost, what, 21 pounds now? Like she's rocking it. But I, I just say that because she signed up as a discount. So don't discount your discount coaches either because you never know when you're going to get an Alyssa and just have someone that just goes, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. Thank you for being patient with me. Thank you for being a friend. Thank you for being a cheerleader. I'm ready. Like, that's a cool feeling. That's a cool feeling. So just keep Are you trying to make me cry? No, but I, it's really easy to do. (laughs) But that's, I mean, it's, I think it's important. It's important. It's like what you're talking about. Cause for me, Mm -hmm. You know, this is the first team call I've ever been on. I've been doing this for a couple of months. Like, it's super overwhelming. So hearing about, you know, it's a lot, I think, just to digest and kind of make mm-hmm. sense of it all. And, you know, it's I'm in that place, like you're saying, when you're new and you're like, I'll take anybody. Anybody, can't, you know, it's like I'm not at that choosy place, but I'm still figuring it out. But, you know, so it's a lot. It's a lot. And just trying to remember you know, why I'm doing it and why it's important. And it's not necessarily the money thing. It's just hearing people's stories, you know, it's Mm -hmm. just and wanting to try and figure out like, what is my team going to look like? So I think it's, you know, this was perfect for me to be able to jump on. And this happens to be the first one I hear. Good. So good, good, good. I, yeah. Um, I had a thought from that. I can't remember what it was. Oh, so one thing I do get is, well, I asked this person, they said, no, I asked this person or they signed up with somebody else or, and that happens a lot, happens often. And here's my response to it. And you might hate me, but I just say, I think God was saving me a problem. I just say, thanks, next. Because I truly believe that he's just watching out for me when people don't choose me to be their coach or they choose somebody else to the tournament they fix with or whatever the case may be. I just truly say, okay, that's fine because they might have been a time sucker coach. They might have been a life sucker coach. They might have had 20,000 questions. Like it, we might not have gotten along or had the same goals. Like I just say, okay, thanks. Can you send another one down? Like, you know? <laughs> but I think like, it's not an easy, it's not, it's not easy, but just knowing that I have given this business to him and I do let him have the reins of it. It's not always easy sometimes, but I, I think that something, I think there's something to be said about that in the sense of if you, I'm going to get real Jesus here, but if you truly have given this to him and you truly have said like, you've brought me to this opportunity for a reason and I'm going to trust you with the opportunity, whether that is just to, to grow myself, to deepen my relationship with you, to be a six figure earner, to be a 15 star diamond. Like not everyone might be a 15 star diamond because that's not God's plan for everybody. So the season of this coaching business that you're in is exactly where God wants to have you. There's a reason that almost three years into this, I'm not an elite coach right now. And if you would have said this a month ago, I probably would have gone. But after doing some digging and soul searching and personal growth, like I am 110% confident where God has our team right now. And I'm loving this ride. And I'm so proud of you guys. And I just like you when you know that he's in control of this, it's easier to let the negative stuff go because you know, he's watching out for you and you know that the blessings are about to come. If you can be faithful where you are, if you can be faithful where you are. He's going to be faithful to you. And I can 110% with my whole heart believe that because the last six weeks has taught me that. So if you can be faithful in this business, if you can give him what you can right now, if he, if what he's given you, you can use the best you can. He's going to bless you with that much more when he thinks you're ready for it. 
And that might be in six months. That might be in eight months. I don't know, but I do know that he will not give up on you and the dreams. I just listened to Joel Olstein and I'm going to post this in the team page. Meg sent it to us today and I listened to the podcast and it's all about, um, let me find it. Uh, remembering your dream and that God places dreams in our hearts and God dreams goals in our hearts. And when we don't accomplish those, it's not necessarily because we, because he doesn't want that for us anymore. It's because we hit a road bump. We have a setback, something happened. So I really encourage you to listen to that. It's a podcast, Joel Olstein. And, um, remember your dream is what it's called. It's 20 minutes, 27 minutes, but he's fun. I like him. So I would highly recommend you listening to that as well. Listen to that while you're writing out your dream team, while you're writing out your goals for the week or your goals for the month. Um, that that's why I got all preachy because I was listening to that before. (laughs) But, um, so that would be another thing for you guys to listen to. And, subscribe to his podcast. He's so helpful. He's so motivating and he's so right. It's scary. So that's what I have for you. Just, you know, building your network, recruit, not recruiting, um, building your dream team, writing down your, your dream team and who those people are and what qualities you want them to have. And just knowing and being faithful where you are so that God can use you where you are to prepare you for where he needs you in a month or in two months. All right. Good. All right, guys, this is a good call. Thanks for hopping on. It's good to see your faces and it is recorded. So I will stop recording now.